Good evening. Welcome to this episode of Cocktails with the Curator. I am Xavier Salomon, the Deputy Director and Peter J. Sharp, Chief Curator at the Frick Collection. We are in the middle of autumn, of the fall, and as winter is approaching uh, here in the Northern Hemisphere and the temperatures are getting colder, I thought I would focus today on one of the most wintry pictures at the Frick Collection, this wonderful landscape by Claude Monet, which is entitled Verteuil in Winter. I am matching it with the typical uh, winter drink. Uh, this is some mulled red wine uh, with spices warmed up and a razor glass to all of you. The Monet painting was acquired in 1942 by the Frick Collection uh, from the dealer Wildenstein. This is not a picture that came to the Frick from Henry Clay Frick. It was a later acquisition. We only have four Impressionist pictures at the Frick, three of which were acquired by Frick, and this one arrived later. It is interesting to think of Frick as a collector of Impressionist works. We think of him, of course, as the great collector of old master paintings uh, from the Middle Ages to the 19th century, but the Impressionists were more or less his contemporaries. Monet was born uh, nine years before Frick and died um, several years later in the 1920s. So their lives very much overlapped. Uh, when Frick was born, Monet was nine years old. And when Frick died in 1919, Monet was still very much alive. So when we think of Frick acquiring Impressionist works, we should think of someone acquiring pretty much contemporary art. And as we all know, Impressionism wasn't everybody's cup of tea in those years. Um, and it is interesting to think about which American collectors were great proponents and, uh, and supporters of the Impressionist movement and which ones were not. We think, of course, of Monet as the painter of the great water lilies, uh, the painter of Giverny, who paints locations and flowers and, and sites at different times of day and at different seasons. And our painting is, in many ways, part of the story. But it is also part, of course, of the story of Impressionism itself. Impressionism was coined as a word after the exhibition in 1874, in the spring of 1874, where Claude Monet showed this work uh, entitled Impression Sunrise. And after this painting, which is now in the Musée Marmontin Monet in Paris, um, the, the, the movement, which included, of course, painters like Degas and Sisley and Caillebotte and Renoir, uh, all of them were put under this umbrella of Impressionism. And they showed uh, all the way until 1886 altogether, some of them showing at some of the exhibitions and not others, um, all together under, under this, uh, this name. As I said, the Frick Collection has four paintings by these artists. Of course, we have a painting by Edouard Manet, who you know, sits somewhat uneasily in this definition of Impressionism. Is he, is he an Impressionist? Is he not? He predates many of the other painters in some of his choices in terms of style. But Frick acquired this work in 1914, and this is a fragment of a much larger work. Uh, this we, we call the bullfight at the Frick, but it was part of a much larger picture called Incident of, from a Bullfight, um, which was shown at the Salon of 1864 uh, to very mixed reviews. Uh, famously, the bull in the, in the painting was described as a rat with horns because the bull was in the background of the picture and not very visible. And so Manet himself cut the large painting in, in sections. And this is part of the background, which he saved. And the foreground with the dead matador is now at the National Gallery in Washington. In the same year, 1914, Frick buys the other two Impressionist works, uh, which are at the Frick. He buys uh, Renoir's uh, Promenade. Uh, this is a young woman in, in a park in Paris, presumably, walking with two young girls, presumably sisters, uh, dressed identically with their dolls. Um, is this an older sister? Is this a young mother? Is this more likely uh, um, a nanny walking through a park. This 
is shown at the second Impressionist exhibition in the spring of 1876. And as I say, Frick acquires it in 1914. So just the year he's moving into the house at 170th Street, he buys his Manet, he buys his Renoir, and he also buys in the same year his Degas. It's interesting that all three come to the house to 170th Street in the same year. The Degas is one of the typical scenes of ballerinas. It's called the rehearsal. And this was shown instead at the fourth Impressionist exhibition in 1879. So these are both, both the Renoir and the Degas, paintings from the mid, uh, mid 1870s. The Monet sits exactly uh, in that period, in the second half of the 1870s, um, chronologically. And in fact, it was painted in between the Renoir in 1876 and the uh, Degas in 1879. And Frick actually owned two other paintings by Monet previously uh, during his lifetime. He acquired two, one he ended up returning, but this is the one that he kept. For, painted in 1879, it shows the banks of the Seine, of the river, uh, at Lavacour. And amazingly enough, Lavacour is the small uh, set settlement across the river from, pretty much, from Verteuil. So the, the painting that we now have at the Frick collection shows the other side of the river uh, from Lavacour. And it was painted very close in time. But as I say, our painting at the Frick was only acquired later on by the trustees at the Frick in, in 1942. This is the town of Verteuil today. Uh, as you see it, uh, it's a small town next to the river, next to the Seine, uh, outside of Paris. Um, built around the central church, the Abbey Church of Notre Dame, uh, which is the core of the small town, which has retained its rural aspect that it had when Monet lived there. Monet painted Verteuil uh, at different times of day and during different seasons. Here is a selection of some of these paintings showing the church and the river uh, at different seasons, in the summer, in spring, in the middle of the day, but also, of course, during the harsh winters. And this is a scene of the river uh, at Verteuil during one of these, the two winters he spent there, the, the winter of 78-79 and the winter of 79-80. But we need to go back to the life of Monet and how he gets to Verteuil and how Verteuil becomes this very important phase of his life. Monet was born in 1840 in the north of France, in Le Havre, and he, he worked as, as a painter there. He then, of course, moved to Paris, spent some time in London. Uh, but by the 1870s, he, of course, had coined uh, Impressionism as we know it with the painting of 1874, but he is beginning to work with this idea of serial paintings showing the same site a number of times. And in the 1870s, the early 1870s, he's working very much on the Gare Saint-Lazare, one of the train stations in Paris. And he's showing the station in a series of paintings at different times, again, of seasons, of days, um, showing the same site over and over again. And he becomes very interested in this idea of focusing on a specific place. Of course, the Gare Saint-Lazare was uh, the train station in Paris where he would get to from Argenteuil, where he had moved with his wife, with, Cam with Camille, and uh, where he had his two, um, his two young kids. So this is really the beginning of what we know uh, is one of the typical traits of Monet. And here I'm showing you paintings from much later on in his life, from the 1890s. But he becomes famous, of course, for his serial depiction of the facade of the cathedral of, uh, of Rouen. And here are three examples showing it again different times of day. And of course, most famously again from the 1890s, uh, the celebrated haystacks. And of course, he then goes on to paint the, the, the even more famous water lilies. Monet was working in Argenteuil, uh, accompanied often by his wife, and he worked often on a riverboat uh, on the Seine, depicting scenes uh, outdoors from his riverboat. And this is a painting uh, by Manet, uh, showing Monet on, on his boat um, at, and um, showing uh, how he's painting on one of his uh, floating um, studios that he had uh, where he worked on. A painting, uh, Vatoy in Winter, is about the time he spent in the small town. So in 1878, in September 1878, he decides to move along the Seine from Argenteuil 
to the Toy. And he establishes himself here with his wife, Camille, with their two kids, and with another family. Uh, the family of uh, um, his um, one of his big collectors and supporters, Ernst Oshede, uh, who was the owner of department stores in Paris, uh, and his wife, Alice, and their six children. This is a very turbulent time for the two families, for the Oshede family and for the Monet family. Oshede goes bankrupt and ends up selling many of his Impressionist works. He moves abroad and, uh, and dies a few years later in the 1890s. Um, Alice and the children are under the roof with Monet. Uh, in Vitoy, Monet is um, experiencing financial difficulties at this point, and he is uh, during a very difficult time in his career. His wife, Camille, uh, suffers from tuberculosis. She's in her early 30s, but while here, after the birth of the second child, uh, she develops cancer. And, and these are very difficult years for the couple there. And Alice Oshede is, um, is spending time with them, looking after Camille, uh, who is gravely sick, while Monet is painting. And this is a real time of crisis for Monet, and this painting is painted exactly at that time. This is the winter between 1878 and 1879, a very cold winter, and here is Vauteuil from the opposite side of the river, from the side of Lavacour, um, covered in snow with ice in the river. And this is a scene that Monet depicts a number of times. Here's the road to Vauteuil, uh, covered in snow, uh, this is the church, the Church of Notre Dame. Uh, again, a somewhat sort of wintry scene. This is actually one of my favorite depictions of the church from the National Galleries uh, of Scotland. And another scene of the day in winter, this in this case from the Musée d'Orsay in Paris. Our curator emerita at the Frick, Susan Grace Galassi, has just written a beautiful small book on this painting, which will come out in the next year or so. Um, so I encourage all of you to, uh, to look at this book when it will come out, because she beautifully uh, depicts the story of Monet in Vertoy, these couple of years that the painter spends there, these very difficult and complex uh, years, which are very important for his career and for his, uh, his works. These are sort of really encapsulated in a letter he writes to one of his friends around this time. And Monet says, I am absolutely sickened with and demoralized by this life I've been leading for so long. When you reach my age, and it's worth remembering he's in his late 30s, really, there is nothing more to look forward to. Unhappy we are, unhappy we will continue to be. Each day, brings its tribulations, and each day difficulties arise from which we can never free ourselves. So I am giving up the struggle once and for all, abandoning all hope of success, and I no longer have the strength to work in such conditions. I hear my friends are preparing another exhibition this year, but I must discount the possibility of participating in it, since I have nothing worth showing. This is a moment of doubt. It's a moment where you have to imagine this youngish artist, I mean, the middle of his life, uh, who is dealing with difficulties with his family, with his sick wife. He's dealing with his art, which is not selling, um, with Hoshede's bankruptcy and a number of Impressionist paintings coming up on the market all at one go, just around those years. The market is flooded and basically the, the, the price of Impressionist pictures goes down. Monet is still supported by his great friends and colleague, the other painter, uh, Gustave Caillebot, who is really one of the great um, supporters of Monet in, in these difficult years. But of course, what happens in the year they are in Vauteuil is that Camille dies. Camille dies in September 1879. And this is this harrowing painting uh, which Monet paints, um, showing his wife on her deathbed. The last days of Camille Monet are harrowing. Uh, she's in a great lot deal of pain. And when she finally dies, the first thing Monet does is he paints her. And he says to a friend that he cannot focus on the scene. He, he is really thinking about it as colors and shapes. He, he just cannot focus on the fact that his wife is gone. Uh, the great art historian John Berger wrote beautifully that this is a terrible blizzard of loss, this painting. And that's exactly what it is. And in many ways, it's similar to those winter scenes at the toy with the snow and the ice in the paintings. 
Our picture is from the previous winter, but the following winter, the winter between 79 and 80, it's an even harsher one. It's one of the coldest winters on record in France. Uh, it was renamed the Little Ice Age. Uh, in fact, the river froze and great chunks of ice, ice flows, were, were sort of floating down the river and uh, banging against the embankments and, and making huge noises. There are descriptions of, of the Monet family waking up in the morning, hearing these thunderous noises as the ice is breaking and coming down along the river. And of course, at this time when we are all concerned about climate change and what is happening in, on, on our planet, um, this is worth remembering that some of these terrible um, natural disasters also occurred uh, in the past. And of course, you know, they're now uh, speeding up and happening in a very different way. Uh, but Monet witnesses one of these, these difficult periods. And so I'm thinking about, obviously, our winter ahead, the pandemic still very much raging in Europe and in the Western world, in America, um, a, a difficult winter ahead for all of us, of course. Uh, but I keep thinking back to this winter in Monet's life and the loss of his wife, uh, the, this difficulty with this incredibly cold winter. He's left alone with his two children and the six other children of the Oshede family and Alice. But of course, as everything, um, things turn out in a very different way. Think back to the letter that Monet writes to his friend about the fact that he's giving it all up. He cannot paint. Uh, no one is buying his work. There is no, no idea that he will continue with this. But of course, he does continue, and life continues beyond Camille's death. Uh, Alice Oshede ends up leaving her husband uh, a year later, a couple of years later, and moving in with Monet. And so Alice and Monet uh, create a new couple, bringing up together these eight children. Finally, Oshede dies in 91, and a year later, Alice and Monet are married. So actually, the, the person living under the roof, looking after Camille as she's, uh, as she's gravely sick, ends up being the companion of the second life of Monet's life. And Monet, of course, goes on painting. And fortunately, he does so. Imagine he would have actually stopped painting when he was in Vatoy. We would have no cathedrals. We would have no, um, no haystacks. We would have no water lilies. And finally, the two, Alice and Monet, move to Giverny, only a few, few years after leaving Vatoy. And that's where they will spend the rest of their lives. Camille is, is buried at Notre Dame in Vatoy. She remains there as, as commemorating, in a way, this incredibly sad part of Monet's life. But Monet himself moves to Giverny, and that's where both he and Alice um, will die years later. And here he is, of course, as we all think of him, in his garden on the bridge with the water lilies. But this is really to think that um, as difficult times as we all experience in our lives, with loss, with, with, with losses in our families close to us, with difficulties brought on by the natural world around us, there is always hope for the future. And in many ways, that's what we need to think about. And that's what we need to focus on. Fortunately for us, Monet continued painting. Uh, Cayabot and other people kept supporting him. And that's how already in the 1880s and onwards, uh, his success uh, became a very different story from the, the difficult couple of years in Vertoy. I would like to thank you all uh, for joining me this evening. And I hope you're all enjoying your mulled wine. I would also like to to mention that you may have seen that on the on this page there is now a fundraiser uh, button. Uh, this means that you can contribute if you wish to to our annual fund. And if you make a donation to the Frick before the end of the year, before December thirty first, this donation will be matched um, equally. So. Every donation you make, think, will be doubled. And we would be very grateful if you can contribute and help us uh, continue to do what we're doing. And we all look forward to welcoming you at the Frick Collection when we reopen. Thank you and good evening. <laughs>